Welcome everyone. Uh, we will start in around four minutes. So thank you so much uh, for coming today. Um, it's about our guest speaker's work, um, how he approaches rejuvenation and tries to solve aging. And he also um, formed a company around his research to come up with treatments. And I shared the link in the chat. Um, and if you think this is interesting, please share the room uh, with people that you think could learn from it. Um, and uh, we will start shortly. Thank you so much, everyone. Yeah, um, just to, uh, to let you know, I shared some res um, resources in the chat. First is the Cell Life dot life information about the, our guest speaker's company, how he tries to address um, aging and, and how to um, make our aging easier or slow it down. And then also I shared the link um, for his paper in the chat and um, on top is the presentation. So feel free to look into those resources uh, while we are waiting for um, our guest speaker and for starting. It's usually we start on top of the hour and uh, yeah, feel free to share the room if you think this is interesting for people that you know. And uh, yeah, we'll start shortly. Uh, I think there's a lot of information in the meantime. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, thanks for being here. If you have questions, if you want to participate in the discussion, feel free to raise your hand in the meantime and come up on the stage. Um, so it will be easier to take your questions when you have them. Thank you.
um yeah in the meantime while uh, we are waiting for a guest speaker to come here he is new to clubhouse uh apologies um for um the little bit of waiting but in the meantime this is a really <clears throat> this is really exciting research um just um to refer to um the paper here uh really quick um while we are waiting so i don't know if everyone here in the audience knows how telomeres are always associated with aging and the length of telomeres uh, in particular and um, once the telomeres are shorter it's really difficult to go back in time basically and lengthen them especially during aging so uh, what our guest speaker here uh, successfully did was an intracellular transfer of telomeres uh, between cells and it rescued T cells from senescence and promoted long-term immunological memory. So um, this is really a really big uh, deal in the aging uh, research um, field that he was able to transfer basically um, healthy telomeres and um, improved uh, rescued cells from dying and uh, improved even their function because of what T cells do is um, they have this long-term immunolo immunological memory to fight off diseases and um, not just that he could um, transfer the telomeres, um, they basically implemented themselves in, in the cell um, in a way that the cells could perform their healthy function again. Um, so that's why this is a really big deal and um, that's why I invited our guest speaker here. Um, and um, with his um, research, um, as I said before, he uh, started his own company, uh, <clears throat> uh, Send Cell Life, and um, how he would like to achieve human rejuvenation is um, he wants to use to use a similar approach to green technology. Oh, there, Hi. are you there? Hi. Hi, perfect. Hi, sorry. How are you? This, this is new to me. This is new to me. I'm very well. How are you? Thank yes, you for good. the invitation. Oh, thank you for taking the time in your busy schedule. I was just talking a little bit about why your paper is so important, you know, your research. And I started talking a little bit about your company to, you know, uh, inform people that that just joined uh, because it's a public room and maybe don't know anything yet about your research um, to just give like, you know, pass some time. So uh, thank yeah. you so much for coming. Thank you. First question for me is that, can you hear me correctly? Because I mean, we're having some issues with the connection. So is my voice clear? Yes, mm -hmm. I can hear you very well. Okay, thank you. Perfect. So thanks and again for the invitation. Uh, my name is Alessio Lanna, and I have a laboratory uh, at Centicel. We study here the longevity and the biology of human aging. And we are focusing on, on T lymphocytes <clears throat> that are important to control infections and cancers. And they have to undergo this task uh, for decades. So that's why they're a very good model to study biology of longevity, right? Because these cells. Uh, have to persist in a, mo in a memory state for a very long time. There is the issue of senescence uh, that arises uh, after progressive stimulation, at least it's thought it arises after progressive stimulation of the lymphocytes uh, and immune senescence appears uh, and that leads to the deterioration of the immune response uh, leading to the aging process. And, and now T cells uh, are regarded, uh, are started to be regarded uh, as really at the pinnacle of 
all the aging phenomena across the body. And so that's very exciting for us at Sentisil because we are focusing on uh, delivering uh, new medications, first-in-class treatments to rejuvenate to the T-cell state. There's, there's been a lot of work uh, on many different states uh, of altered T-cell function, such as, for instance, energy and exhaustion, but very little is known uh, of the pathways uh, that govern senescence uh, in the immune system. And people sometimes, uh, they, they think they're the same thing, like senescent and exhausted T-cells, actually, they couldn't be more wrong, but they're very different states, uh, and they need a separate therapeutic intervention, and that's what we are trying to do, my company uh, at Sentisil. Uh, it's important because we target senescence that, as a, obviously, as I said, appears as we grow older, but this is not just a phenomena uh, of the age, but actually happens in a lot of different situations, inflammatory conditions, uh, and cancers, uh, HIV infections, uh, and so on. So this is the slide on what is immune senescence, essentially. So moving forward, uh, the hallmarks uh, of immune senescence, uh, there is a loss of consumable receptors, there is a lack of telomerase raise activity, uh, there is reduced proliferative capacity, impaired metabolism, uh, and so on. Uh, and uh, over the past decade, uh, work uh, I've been doing has really characterized uh, all these phenomena that go wrong uh, in the T cells uh, as we get older. They seem to be connected uh, through a single uh, pathway, uh, which was previously unknown, uh, which is called the ESMAC. ESMAC uh, or ESMAX uh, uh, are sestrin mechanism activation complexes. So sestrins are our family of poorly understood growth regulators uh, and stress sensing proteins uh, that accumulate during aging. Uh, there are three of them sestrin 1, 2, and 3. Uh, they uh, are found uh, from worms to humans, so it's a very concerned pathway. Um, in Drosophila, there is one sestrin, but then during evolution, they duplicated uh, and they arose uh, uh, into these three different gene products. Uh, actually, the name sestrins uh, derived from a little country, a town here in Italy. Uh, during a congress, the stories that uh, people, uh, when looking at their genes, uh, they, they found homology in that. Uh, it was a country, a town, I think it was called Sestre. Uh, and so, yeah, because they realized that in that meeting, uh, then they call these three different genes uh, the sestrins. Um, so the sestrins uh, uh, in the ASMAC uh, um, that I discovered uh, uh, act uh, through a stress kinase or metabolic uh, uh, kinase regulator that is very well known, AMP uh, K responsive protein kinase. Uh, uh, and the AMPK exert uh, its activities through three different effector kinases, uh, ERK, P38, and JK. It doesn't do it directly, though. Uh, it doesn't show it here, but it, it does it through scaffolds. For instance, we know that P38 uh, uh, undergoes autophosphorylation uh, upon activation of AMPK and then binding to TAB1, and probably similar uh, scaffolding proteins support uh, uh, the autophosphorylation reactions of ERKs and JNK proteins. Uh, what is very important and very cool about the ESMAC uh, is that essentially there are different uh, uh, roles uh, of the different components uh, uh, in the pathway, meaning that uh, upon a stress signal, the sestrins would appear, that they bind to the AMPK, and the AMPK induces the scaffold supported autophosphorylation, autophosphorylation reactions. Uh, whereby each single MAP kinase here regulates uh, a different aspect uh, of the senescence of T-cells. Uh, so for instance, ERK would induce any damage in the T-cell, P38 would arrest the telomerase activity, and JNK would suppress uh, CD, uh, CD3 and CD28 uh, costumatory receptor signaling, and also intracellularly, it's the kinase, is a single kinase responsible for a new characteristics of senescence that I discovered during my PhD studies at UCL, uh, and now professor at UCL as well. Um, that there is a loss uh, of the TCR signalosome components of LCK, uh, ZAP70, um, and all those proteins. Uh, 
so moving forward with the slides, uh, then how the telomeres uh, came into pictures? So, well, obviously, uh, as I said, telomerase is thought to be uh, the single enzyme that is responsible for uh, the aging of cells, including T cells. Um, the story is that when telomeres get very short, uh, uh, there is a threshold around four kilobases uh, at which proliferative activity stops, uh, and then the cells enter a status which is actually metabolically impaired but still active. Uh, so it's not a quiescent cell, but it's metabolically active because it produces compounds, for instance, it produces inflammatory cytokines and so on, uh, responsible for age-related inflammation. Um, and uh, the senescence, uh, therefore, uh, has always been thought uh, as a telomerase-related problem. So people, including myself, uh, during my PhD studies, were really focused uh, trying to reactivate the telomerase. Uh, However, there is, uh, there, is, there is an issue. There is an issue is that even if you uh, overexpress the telomerase or you overactivate uh, the enzyme, uh, and for instance, you do a simple experiment uh, in which T cells uh, are, uh, um, are provided extra support uh, uh, with an extra telomerase activity, uh, at some point uh, uh, they reach proliferative exhaustion. And actually, they do that uh, very quickly in vitro. And this is something and the paradox and a mystery that nobody in the field uh, understood. Why a T cell that in the body can stay fit for decades, uh, if that T cell is, uh, is cultured um, uh, in vitro, uh, why that T cells last for only a few weeks and then essentially stop dividing? So it was clear that there was something missing uh, to the story. So uh, that led uh, so the next slide uh, to uh, our new discovery uh, now on nature's biology uh, this month uh, of the uh, telomere transfer uh, phenomena. Um, so what is telomere transfer? Uh, so moving slide again, uh, telomere transfer is uh, an alternative pathway of telomere elongation that does not uh, require telomerase activation in the T cell. Uh, when does it happen? Uh, it happened before uh, telomerase uh, is even activated. So telomerase is generally activated uh, in T cells uh, uh, after antigen presentation, but you need several hours, a couple of days, uh, to actually detect uh, enzymatic activity in the cell. Uh, telomere transfer often, uh, happens before. Uh, so when T cell in the lymph nodes uh, during antigen presentation uh, encounter an antigen presenting cell, uh, those cells uh, will uh, uh, undergo uh, a decision whether uh, they will become a senescent progenitor or whether they become uh, a long-lived stem-like or, uh, or central memory cell. Um, so how does that happen? Um, so when T cells, uh, when an antigen-specific reaction takes place uh, in certain conditions, uh, which we haven't yet revealed, uh, APCs uh, establish that that T cell is worth of a telomere donation. Uh, in that circumstance, uh, what they do is they uh, quickly degrade sheltering. Sheltering is uh, a complex uh, of proteins uh, uh, that protects and caps the telomeres uh, at the ends of chromosomes. So, and upon sheltering degradation, there is an enzyme called TZAP, which was described to, ban to bind to uh, telomeres that are devoid uh, of, of sheltering proteins, uh, and that would provide uh, uh, essentially uh, the, the signal uh, to, to cut and to eliminate, uh, well, to, to remove, sorry, the, the telomeres from, uh, the, uh, from the chromosome ends. Um, upon, uh, uh, essentially, upon this activity of TZAP, then the telomere is, is packaged in a, in a vesicle, uh, and that vesicle uh, is, is loaded with, uh, with a protein called RAD51, which is an homologous recombination enzyme provided by the APC. That vesicle containing telomeres of RAD51 uh, is transferred to the antigen-specific T cell that receives the vesicle and somehow incorporates these vesicles uh, at some uh, telomeres, uh, probably ultra-short telomeres, we're now characterizing the pathways uh, that actually is responsible for this uh, um, fusion reaction and how the T cell 
decides where to incorporate the telomeres. Uh, it seems that the incorporation is not a stochastic process. Anyhow, the result uh, of the fusion uh, is that that cell is endowed uh, with increased replicative capacity. Uh, it generates memory, so it's an antigen-specific long-lived memory cell. It's protected from senescence because it's turned towards uh, a stem-like state, and so on. Uh, so this is a very different uh, thing than what we previously thought. We previously thought that senescence uh, was essentially a consequence uh, of repeated episodes of simulation. And now, instead, we are proposing uh, the rather different uh, scenario in which uh, before uh, a naive T cell even star division, that cell is committed to either an aging fate or a stem-like or long-lived memory state, pending on a single event and a single decision whether uh, that cell receives or not uh, telomeres in form of donation from APCs. So moving forward with the data, the other slide, please. Uh, so to discover, so the discovery of telomere transfer, a lot of studies, you probably you read the paper, uh, here and summarized um, some what I think is probably most significant things. Uh, uh, one thing that during the reviewing of, of the paper we faced a lot of skepticism uh, and it took a long time, many years, uh, to get the paper out uh, was that um, regardless of the methodology to, to study uh, the telomeres, uh, that is obviously standard fish, uh, which is accepted, uh, obviously, in the telomere field, but as, a, as an important limitation <laughs> that obviously it's performed on fixed cells. Uh, so if you have to do, uh, obviously, uh, standard fish on fixed cells, you cannot study the movement of particles. And another uh, aspect uh, that we have used uh, that actually produce similar results, uh, we actually introduce PNA, the PNA ETLC specific probes uh, using glass, uh, glass beads that essentially they, they generate uh, the transient uh, holes uh, uh, in, the, in the plasma lemma of, of, the, uh, of the APCs uh, before encountering with T cells. So, so that is important because it, that allows us to introduce the fluorescent probes in the cell before uh, forming an antigen-specific synapse. So, so in that way, uh, all the uh, telomeres uh, for instance, here in the 3D live telomere transfer experiment, I'm showing all those white signals, all those telomeres uh, are obviously only of APC origin. Uh, so as I said, something that took a very long time to convince people and reviewers uh, was that we were always observing these uh, unusual, uh, to use the reviewer's wording, uh, unusual signals uh, uh, where these large clusters uh, of, uh, of telomere signals would appear uh, at the synapse uh, and reviewers were thinking this would basically be uh, uh, the probe uh, attached to the beads, uh, which is a bit weird because the beads are actually uh, visible uh, at the naked eye, so that was impossible. Uh, anyhow, uh, we have demonstrated that obviously this is not due to an artifact induced by the beads uh, and instead it can be reproduced uh, uh, as you see here on the, in the top left, uh, on, on a standard fish experiment, uh, you can clearly see in the APCs, the, the, the CTB negative cell, uh, uh, the, the telomere in, in the APCs form these uh, beautiful clusters uh, at the synapse with T cells that precedes uh, the transfer to the um, uh, CTB uh, blue positive T cell. Uh, obviously, in the in the immune synapse uh, field, uh, it is very well known uh, uh, the polarization and clustering of molecules at the synapse uh, precedes transfer in the opposite cell. We have performed experiments uh, on synthetic bilayers uh, that reproduce on artificial APCs. Uh, it's a big complicated experiment uh, in which T cells. Uh, uh, are allowed first to form a synapse uh, on these artificial uh, uh, surfaces uh, such that they would release the T-cell receptor in microvesicles on the bilayers, T-cells removed, uh, APCs offered uh, those TCR-coated uh, bilayers, uh, uh, and then uh, in that way introducing APCs with pre-level pre telomeres uh, and visible proteins uh, like CD63 here on the right uh, or PTH67, which is a lipid marker, 
we demonstrated uh, that uh, that uh, was actually the signal. The TCR released uh, by the APCs was the signal at the synapse responsible uh, to induce uh, essentially the okay the signal basically the, uh, giving your uh, your telomeres uh, for uh, the APCs to the T cells. Uh, so essentially, uh, purified CR microvesicles or coded B layers uh, can trigger, as I show here, uh, telomere transfer from uh, from APCs. So moving forward. Uh, Obviously, we had to demonstrate whether these telomeres uh, uh, would go where they should be. Uh, essentially, would they go, uh, would they be at the G cell chromosome ends? And as you see here in the other slide, um, they do. So we proved this uh, essentially um, probing DNA in the APCs with ADU, uh, so we, then with reaction chemistry. Uh, after transferring these uh, ADU um, labeled uh, APC telomere vesicles uh, to separate T cells uh, that were not previously in contact with APCs, uh, and uh, again performing standard metaphase fish, we demonstrated that those telomeres donated by APCs uh, were found at these chromosome ends. This is very consistent, both in humans and mice. Uh, about 8% up to 10%, 8% of uh, uh, the recipient T cell uh, 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 chromosomes uh, contain uh, these uh, um, telomeres of APC origin. The telomeres are transferred, as I said, in vesicles, and these are just electron microscopy data that show the evidence of these. Uh, you can see this by uh, transmission electron microscopy with uh, the Telsi Gold labeling showing that most of the telomeres are inside uh, the vesicle. Uh, uh, also something interesting is that it seems that uh, the amount uh, of, uh, of telomeres you can see on the gold labeling seems to correlate uh, with the size of the vesicle. Uh, and then also evidence on assorted, uh, fab sorted uh, fluorescence activity vesicle sorting material uh, by um, scanning electron microscopy for size determination. The sides, uh, is that of an exosome-like vesicle in general. There are some vesicles which are larger, um, up to 300 nanometers, uh, but uh, that is a very minor population of uh, vesicles. Um, as I said, TZAP, again, is required for the telomere vesicle encapsulation reaction, meaning that uh, if you silence TZAP in APCs and you stimulate APCs, uh, uh, with, a, with a unomycin, which is basically a signal that mimics uh, the, uh, the synaptic uh, event uh, uh, of calcium released in the APCs for the assignments with T cells, uh, release telomere vesicles, but if you block TZAP, uh, the vesicles, so the telomere vesicles are not released anymore. Moving slides again, the transfer of TZAP can be observed at the immune synapse. Uh, if you transduce APCs with the fluorescent TZAP, they form synapses uh, uh, with, um, with T cells, and you can observe uh, on, on a standard fish, again, uh, it's very cool uh, co-localization of, uh, um, of blue TZAP uh, uh, with, with telomeres at the synapse uh, uh, demonstrating the transfer. Um, again, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we went ahead uh, uh, showing that uh, obviously TZAP is known to process uh, telomeres that are um, that contain a low concentration of sheltering, so we reason that this reaction would occur at telomeres uh, that have degraded or lost somehow sheltering. We demonstrated that upon activation by ionomycin uh, in moving slides on panel A or uh, on synapse formation with T cells in panel B. In panel B uh, what you can see is that the sheltering levels uh, here, sheltering is exemplified by two uh, proteins uh, in panel A, TRF2 and POT1, in panel B only TRF2, but the concept is the same. As you can see, 24 hours in the synapse, for instance, in panel B, the level of TRF2, uh, the green signal in the APC, uh, which is the cells uh, um, CD3 negative, obviously, um, uh, essentially uh, is diminished, uh, and this is a protosomal degradation because uh, when we pretreated the, the APCs with the protosome inhibitor MG132, uh, this uh, um, essentially um, degradation of sheltering was prevented, okay? 
Uh, why this is important? This is important because this is the event that moving slides again uh, that initiates the transfer of telomeres. So you can overexpress uh, uh, sheltering in APCs uh, and you can stimulate the APCs uh, with the for instance, uh, and you can precipitate the telomeric material from the supernatant to the supernatants. Uh, you can see uh, quite cool the dot plot here in which uh, upon uh, uh, stimulation with ionomycin, uh, uh, in sheltered and overexpression, uh, overexpressing APCs, uh, essentially there is no release uh, of telomeric material within the vesicle fraction recovered upon ultra, uh, cent uh, ultra centrifugation. So the function of this phenomena is to generate, as I said, stemness and to protect these cells from senescence. Uh, and this is moving slides again, uh, uh, what this uh, uh, set of experiments demonstrates. The T cells turn into a stem like memory state. Uh, within a naive T cell compartment uh, of CD45 array positive, CD28 double positive uh, T cells. You can see the increase 7.24 uh, upon 15 days in culture with purified determined vesicles uh, of these cells. And within this naive double positive naive population, uh, you can see the increase uh, uh, of stem-like T cells, uh, which is a very important increase because we are talking about a very rare population of T cells. Uh, in general, these cells are about 1-2%, so we are able to boost it uh, up to 10%, uh, so that's quite significant. Uh, with a single uh, treatment of vesicles in vitro, uh, we are also able to uh, remove uh, senescent T cells uh, uh, and uh, uh, to <clears throat> remove sastrin and smac signaling uh, and to expand them, uh, them in culture. Uh, <coughs> And you can see uh, also the dysfunction on something that I will comment on later on, but these protective longevity effects uh, are uh, uh, related uh, to the RAT51 and are dependent to the RAT51 that is co-transferred in the telomere vesicles uh, because uh, in experiments, uh, when we have removed the uh, RAT51 in the APCs with the thyronase, uh, the right vesicles and 3D T cells uh, with those uh, RAT51 depleted vesicles, uh, the function uh, and the boosting effect uh, in terms, for instance, of proliferation or protection of senescence in the particular because as you say, is, is lost. So RAT51 is very important for that reaction. So does then we transfer, I'm moving slide again, uh, happens in vivo? The answer is yes. Uh, we have designed experiments in which we've used the OT2 uh, system uh, in which essentially uh, an APC is, uh, is preluded with albumin injected uh, into the footpad of an animal. This APC is uh, as preloaded uh, live label CY3 telomeres with the glass bit technology I mentioned before. Uh, um, 18 hours later, OT2 cells uh, are injected uh, uh, in, the, in the caudal vein uh, and vaccination with OVAR is offered or not. Uh, and after 18 hours again, uh, popliteal leaf nodes are extracted uh, and then essentially, uh, obviously the T cells uh, that we have injected uh, are labeled with CTV. And then uh, when we recover uh, the T cell material from lymph nodes of these animals, uh, we can look at the CDV positive cells uh, that we have injected uh, that are T cells only and see whether they have acquired or not uh, the fluorescent telomeres uh, from the APCs uh, injected the day earlier. Uh, the answer is they do uh, in large proportion, about 50% of these cells uh, acquire telomeres in vivo in one night. Uh, we have also been validated uh, by metaphys spreads uh, that these uh, telomeres reside in the nuclei of the mouse T cells. Uh, uh, and uh, we haven't seen uh, a single T cell uh, of these uh, CTV positive cells uh, <coughs> positive for the telomere signals uh, that does not contain uh, the APC telomere in the nuclei of the recipient T cells as yet, meaning that uh, the incorporation uh, is complete uh, and they're not just stuck on the plasma lemma as some people thought. <coughs> so um, again, this process is conserved in mice, but what is, uh, sorry, what is the importance of it? So to stand the importance uh, of the process, uh, <coughs> we have, uh, um, with design experiments uh, in which naive uh, OT2 T cells uh, are uh, allowed to form in vitro synapses uh, 
and uh, then sorted uh, based on the fluorescent with, with APCs, obviously in the OT2 model with APCs that again have CO3 positive telomeres uh, labeling, uh, then derive two population of, of OT2 T cells so that they have either acquired or not uh, the fluorescent telomeres uh, from the APCs. Uh, they are transferred uh, in two different sets, uh, sets of recipient animals. Uh, they are offered vaccination after 18 hours uh, and then after 40 days again, uh, a second boost uh, and observed for an additional 50 days, uh, making it uh, a 90 days uh, experiment. Uh, after 90 days and two rounds of vaccination, uh, we discovered and demonstrated that uh, the T cells uh, that in the first uh, in vitro reaction <coughs> and acquired the telomeres uh, from the APCs uh, as switched to a stem-like uh, memory state uh, uh, in the spleen uh, and uh, in, in the lymph node also there were increased numbers in mostly the lymph nodes that we characterized by the spleen uh, in terms of phenotype uh, the switch uh, towards stem-like and central memory state if they increased stem-like and central memory state if they had acquired the telomeres in the first round of uh, synapse formation before the first cell division. So um, this is, as analogy, is essentially identical to what happens in humans. Uh, and this uh, really proves uh, uh, what I said at the beginning of this presentation. So that the aging phase decision of T cell uh, is really uh, determined uh, upon uh, the single decision of telomere transfer. I'm not saying that there are not other mechanisms that can generate memory, but certainly this has been overlooked uh, and it's a very important one because the T cells that don't receive telomeres, uh, even if they form memories, uh, uh, probably the quality of those memories, uh, as we will show very soon, uh, it's not the same quality of uh, this phenomena I'm describing now. Um, so the RAT51 that is present uh, in, uh, in the telomere vesicle is important for the longevity effect. Uh, uh, what is the mechanism? Essentially, uh, as you can see here, uh, there is RAD51 in the vesicle. Uh, if I remove RAD51 in the vesicle uh, uh, and I transfer these vesicles uh, to T cells, uh, the, the co localization is impaired. Uh, how did we do these experiments? Uh, we, we, we took, these are primary human T cells, uh, we took resting primary human CD4s, uh, we uh, mm, labeled uh, uh, telomeres uh, of these T cells in green, and we got, we got uh, autologous uh, APCs, APCs that we use throughout uh, our CD3 depleted peripheral blood mononuclear cells, uh, um, and uh, 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 silence uh, RAT51 these APCs, uh, um, labeled telomeres, uh, get the telomeres out of the cell upon neuromycin stimulation, uh, purify the vesicles and transfer them to these uh, T cells with green telomeres uh, and after 24 hours uh, study the co-localization between the green signal uh, that is the telomeres of the T cells and the red signal that is the telomere of the, uh, the donor cell. This is an important point because I, I read some skeptics uh, they were saying that there are many, too many telomeres in these images. Uh, well, um, that's because uh, only the green signals uh, are the endogenous telomeres and instead the, the red signals, uh, as I said, uh, are the ones uh, offered uh, in forms of vesicles. So the localization is impaired in the absence of RATC1 and so is the telomere elongation by Q-phase, uh, sorry, by metaphase uh, uh, Q-fish uh, <coughs> on the right. Uh, Move it slide again. Uh, um, RAD51 is important, uh, as I showed before, in vitro for human T cell longevity or expansion and in vivo uh, for the longevity of the T cells as well. We have repeated the experiments uh, essentially providing uh, uh, T cells uh, with vesicles, uh, uh, with or without, thermic vesicles with or without, from APCs with or without RAD51 and performed a similar uh, double over vaccination uh, and after 70 days uh, and a resting phase of 30 days here so making 70 days experiments uh, beautifully we show that uh, uh, the, lo the loss uh, of RAT51 in the telomere vesicles completely abolished uh, uh, their longevity effect uh, so the transfer so if I transfer vesicles uh, without RAT51 uh, the transfer uh, doesn't happen. Uh, I'm not showing, but the, we know the reason as well. 
uh, because people obviously were asking why the RAT51 oddities wouldn't compensate, the, uh, the issue is structural. Essentially, RAT51 sits on the single strand DNA, uh, and when you remove uh, RAT51 from these vesicles, uh, we have demonstrated that the single strand DNA in the vesicles uh, is blunted. So essentially, you transfer vesicles that are similar in size, um, but they lack the, the overhang. So we think that the, the loss of the overhang uh, is what basically makes it impossible for them to fuse uh, a T cell chromosome ends upon transfer. And finally, uh, we have uh, investigated <laughs> this and we took this uh, into a more clinical setting um, uh, uh, in experiments in which we essentially we got T cells uh, with or without uh, telomid vesicles. Uh, uh, upon uh, vac first vaccinated animals with, with fluid, fluid is a vaccine uh, uh, for influenza given to the elderly. Uh, we got fluid prime T cells. Uh, these T cells were then offered uh, uh, after five days, so at the peak of the refractor phase in this animal model, uh, they were offered vesicles with or without uh, um, telomeres, uh, uh, and then uh, transferred in another animal that wasn't immunized with fluid, uh, and that animal was either immediately infected with influenza, or the infection happened uh, 15 days later. So the results were striking. So animals, uh, so both cohorts of animals uh, receiving uh, are not uh, uh, telomere vesicles, uh, uh, but obviously fluid prime T cells uh, um, uh, were protected from immediate infections. Uh, instead, animals as a control that receive here in yellow, uh, in yellow uh, animals that received uh, uh, T cells uh, that weren't primed with the vaccine uh, uh, succumbed within five or six days. But the striking difference was that after 15 days, the situation was completely different. So only those prime T cells that received telomeres uh, could support uh, uh, the animals uh, uh, upon delayed infection. So this is the demonstration that telomere vesicle transfer is, is clinically important because it forms a function of memory T cells that persist and that can protect from later infections. Uh, that is the... Um, uh, goal uh, of every vaccination uh, program. So we are really excited about this because obviously we think that including vesicles uh, containing telomeres uh, or uh, having ways uh, to induce a telomere transfer reaction can form uh, uh, better long-lived memory system responses uh, or form uh, new forms of prophylactic, uh, pro prophylactic therapies uh, of immune senescence and age. Uh, and moving slide uh, again uh, at Centicell uh, we are taking now this uh, into uh, into humans. Um, we have uh, a proprietary compound which is called DOS. DOS are the disruptor of the ASMAC. ASMACs are the complexes, uh, as I said, that regulate the senescence of the T cells. DOS uh, are small cyclic peptides uh, that uh, bind to ASMAC and destroy the ASMAC. And they do a lot of things. Uh, I can't say much because this paper is under consideration now in nature. Uh, but one thing I will share with you is that they induce the thermal transfer reaction. They do this in vitro, they do this in vivo, they do this not only in the immune system. Uh, so a clinical trial of the old will start next year uh, that will initiate human rejuvenation by selective disruption of the asthma through the DOS. Uh, and th this is selective. Why it is selective? because sensorings can be found at least in two separate macromolecular complexes. Uh, one was discovered my, by myself, uh, and the other one uh, was characterized by David Sabatini, uh, so containing the other of mTORs. Uh, and sensorings uh, were thought uh, for a very long time uh, to exert uh, exclusively anti-aging function when, act when acting through mTOR1 inhibition, uh, uh, but when sensorings are not in the mTOR, and actually are in the ASMAX, uh, they, they have opposite pro-aging function. And we have now this compound DOS that has a tropism only for senescent cells and that binds exclusively to the ASMAC and that induces, it's the first drug in the world, that induces the telomere transfer reaction in vitro and in vivo and informs uh, long-lived memory responses with or without vaccination. And that is what is really striking, that we can essentially offer the compound even without the vaccine 
and uh, animals are protective uh, um, months later a single injection is offered uh, which is uh, amazing um, so in conclusion we think that aging may be due to loss of thermic transfer reactions uh, rather than uh, simply telomerase inactivation and we will have uh, more exciting studies uh, revealing a different role for telomerase uh, very soon uh, i would like to thank my, all my team melania clara alessandro francesco federica andrea they're all working we're all working together to solve this issue of aging in humans and thank you again for the invitation thanks Wow, for your amazing research. And this is what I said before you arrived that your work is really a game changer for so many things uh, for immunity and for rejuvenation. And um, it's amazing. So, my first question, probably the general public has like, how good can you scale this drug? Like, let's say clinical trials go well, um, and will it be a very expensive treatment? Will it be accessible for a lot of people? Or... Well, yeah. <laughs> that's a different, difficult question for me to reply now, because as you know, there are matters of science and there are matters of business, right? So I probably cannot answer that question. Yeah, okay, <laughs> I understand. But, yeah. uh, you know, when people hear this, they probably, they want to know, like, when can I get that? <laughs> get it? Yeah. What do I have to pay? How much do I have to say? Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> so, um, but, yeah, this is, um, this is such uh, an amazing outcome. And um, I wanted to ask you if, you could use your principle um, also for other cell types in the body or like are you planning to maybe work on we that? We are doing it. Imagine already. for Parkinson and Alzheimer's. And yeah, things. we are doing it already, yes. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> so you're in the process yeah. of in animals yes. or cells for now or? Uh, both, both. Oh, wow, that's amazing. And, and this is a phenomenon that has been underlooked, uh, and uh, this is everywhere. Yeah, so, um, so, so it will all, also be a drug? Would it be the same drug? Um, does it pass? The drug, the, this drug, that's what we are figuring out now. It's something that is really important, obviously, because when you do these manipulations of senescence, uh, something that we had really to make sure was the drug to be safe, not only effective, because there's always the risk so when you do these manipulations of telomere signaling. Uh, um, <clears throat> so I'm pleased to say that uh, in our large cohorts of animals, uh, hundreds and hundreds of animals, uh, we haven't seen cancer, we haven't seen autoimmunity, and we are very confident. Also, we can. this drug is very powerful, so we really need to use it uh, in really, really small amounts, uh, and apparently only once, uh, to induce uh, in animals uh, long-term or what it seems permanent immune rejuvenation. Um, so I'm not saying that uh, there might not be treatments uh, when we offer these drugs uh, multiple times, uh, <coughs> but for sure there won't be short distance, short, short distance uh, uh, protocols, uh, because there are uh, long-lasting uh, rejuvenation cascades that are triggered uh, uh, by the treatment. And uh, another question, maybe Katie um, would like to also have this answered here. Um, do you think for people that have long COVID symptoms, do you think, I think this drug would be very helpful. Um, yeah. it, are you thinking of that too? Yes, yes, absolutely. Mm, yes. And sure. with that, I pass the mic. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry? Oh, I'll pass the mic to oh. Katie if she wants to ask yeah. more about it. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, it's Katie. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Lana. Really, really fascinating research that you're doing. Um, and we, we greatly appreciate your time here. Um, also, anyone else that has any questions, please feel free to raise your hand and come up and ask questions. 
um, or have a look in the chat or type in the chat. There's a presentation um, pinned above and also links to the research. Um, really fascinating stuff. And, you know, building on what Katerina just asked as well, um, you know, it's fascinating. And I know that you mentioned influenza and, um, and as Katerina brought up COVID and long COVID. I'm wondering, um, is this something that could be used either potentially, and I understand, of course, we need clinical trials and why we should all support clinical trials, um, either as a prophylactic or as um, treatment for people that have had SARS-CoV-2. Um, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, we... Um... <clears throat> The, clinic, the first clinical trial will be a trial of influenza vaccination of the old. But we also have data showing that the compound can be given without vaccination and um, animals are protected from infections uh, with influenza viruses. Uh, months later, the, treat, the single treatment is given. So the, the, definitely this compound, uh, for reasons that I cannot share, uh, offers uh, a prophylactic arm uh, uh, to the immune system uh, to face uh, uh, new challenges uh, and that cannot be restricted to viruses. This, this could be, for instance, uh, transformative uh, for cancer vaccines in which essentially you, you could basically shake your T-cell reservoir uh, against uh, things that the T-cells didn't so before. Yes. Um, Hi, sir. Uh, <coughs> yeah. I have a question. Uh, thanks for your precious time. Um, just now you mentioned prophylaxis uh, medicines, uh, trans membranes. Sorry, I, 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 uh, I, I can't hear anything. I can't hear anything. There's uh, a metallic sound. I can't hear anything. Your connection is really bad. If you could switch to a better spot um, so we can hear you. Or would you like me to read? <laughs> Hello? Uh, can you hear me now? Hello? Yeah, not that's much better. better. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, as you just mentioned, uh, the prophylaxis medicines like uh, transmembrane serine protease, uh, the enzyme inhibitors, uh, if we use much, uh, and those will affect the span of T cells or not, I would like to know. Sorry, I can't hear anything. Uh, hello, yeah. hello, hello. Am I audible? I'm sorry, I, I can't hear anything. I yeah, can't. in between you break up. Um, do you want to ask? Um, maybe write in the chat, and then we I read it out. Oh, okay, okay. And uh, 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 can you uh, can you uh, can you hear now? Hello. Yes. Now, yes. Uh, the enzyme inhibitors uh, uh, like uh, transmembrane serine protease, uh, TMPRSS2, if we use those enzyme inhibitors, uh, those will affect the, um, I mean, the lifespan of T cells. That is my question. I don't know the answer. If, it, if they block the transfer of telomeres, uh, they will, yes. But I haven't tested it, so I don't know. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, there's a question in the chat from Shiraz. Um, if you or if it's in general possible to also engineer uh, telomeres in adults um, using tools like CRISPR, um, I think that's just a general question. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> well, I guess with CRISPR technology, you can engineer really anything um yes in, in principle uh, that's doable yeah i don't know if you want to <laughs> uh, i don't i wouldn't do it uh and i'm not focusing on that but in principle i think it's doable yeah yeah but um so maybe do you want to point out uh, no, it's fine. Um, the question, <laughs> but why a drug approach is is more beneficial? Maybe for people that don't understand really um, 
you know, what the risks are of gene therapy and why you would rather prefer a drug approach? Well, I guess that, I mean, we're talking about a drug uh, uh, that is given once uh, and I'm always skeptical with, you know, permanent, it induces, uh, by the way, it induces permanent modification of this drug. It seems in the animals because it, it seems to use permanent rejuvenation, so obviously that comes <laughs> with permanent modifications. Um, um, but I think it's just much more manageable uh, rather than uh, playing with CRISPR. Yes, I agree. Yeah. We don't have the risks enough, and and it's precise, but also that precise. I think a lot of There is a question on people. Well, we are starting the clinical trial next year, so we are manufacturing this drug now. Yeah, that's that's really exciting. I'm really excited about that, and for purely egoistic <laughs> reasons, um, and um, so. For reverse aging, are you planning on, well, is it harder to start clinical trials and get funding for reverse aging or maybe easier even? Um, well, uh, I guess right now it's hard for everyone to raise fundings because it's um, such a bad time worldwide with the war and uh, after the COVID, uh, also the, I think, uh, somehow also damage the uh, expectations um, when you go and talk to investors and people because people think the trials can happen in one year. <laughs> Instead, <laughs> that was an exception. Um, so I, I, I think it has to be a bit kind of compensated uh, somehow and uh, People need to be educated uh, on what is uh, actually standard process uh, that, in general, uh, a drug like this would undergo, right? <clears throat> but I'm confident that in the next five years, uh, this could see the market. Is it an easier approach to maybe... Yeah, I don't know what, what your approach is for rejuvenation. Like, people that are almost about to die anyways. Um, to to get approval for that, maybe on us. Um, we are focusing on people that are still relatively healthy because we are focusing on people who are fifty five or sixty five plus, probably sixty five plus, because we're starting with fluid, which is approved uh, for sixty five plus. This is in the UK, so that makes sense. I think it, what we want to do is we want to add extra years and extra quality to life. Uh, so uh, that's what that's what we are targeting, and in, in you know in the in the field of vaccinations. So vaccinations, obviously, it's just the start. In the field of vaccination, there is really really little little available uh, in terms of options uh, for people to get immunized uh, and to to do that uh, um, in a, a satisfactory fashion. Um, and that relates to influenza, but that relates also to, to COVID-19 because some people then have to get vaccinated many times, so uh, don't really understand uh, yet probably at which cost. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, if you can reduce the number of vaccinations so you can extend uh, the longevity of the and the quality of the response, uh, and I think probably all the, all the body uh, benefits from that uh, uh, so, so we look at it we look at this uh, in, in an holistic fashion obviously yeah thank you for that answer Joyce did you have a question you just joined um, yeah hi very very interesting and thank you for your work um, I was just uh, unfortunately I missed some of it but um, I'll just ask you about a couple of my favorite topics and you can tell me if it has any relevance uh, and that is like the diet and microbiome and inflammation thanks yeah, and, uh, yeah. well um, talking about the diet uh, this thing is connected to metabolism a lot 
um, so the beginning of the call, uh, I, I mentioned uh, that uh, APCs need to understand whether the cells are worthy of active immune donation or not. Um, so antigen presence obviously is, is required, but uh, that's not the only thing. And uh, <clears throat> this was another point of controversy during the long reviewing of this paper because people essentially were saying, you know, you're showing that effective T cells uh, <clears throat> have reduced capacity to get telomeres, uh, but they are uh, really powerful antigen specific cells. So, and the answer I provided uh, is that uh, antigen presence is, is required, but it's not sufficient to trigger the transfer. And the full story, the full story is that uh, <clears throat> um, we are hopefully showing it soon. Uh, T cells require fatty acid oxidation uh, and antigen presence to get telomeres. So if they don't uh, have uh, adequate mitochondrial support, uh, uh, <clears throat> they cannot get the telomeres from the APCs. And we know all the story, we know all the pathway, uh, but I can't show it now. So this paper is about to be submitted. Uh, and that's very important because you know talk, you, you talk about diets and obviously you know that during calorie uh, restrictions uh, you activate and during fasting you activate, you activate fatty acid oxidation and that has uh, a benefit in terms of longevity. So uh, we believe that this is the reason why uh, intermittent fasting, for instance, uh, uh, can produce beneficial long-term uh, longevity effects. <clears throat> oh, thank you. Um, we are almost up to an hour, so I wanted to check if you have time for one more question. Um, yeah. If, yeah. <clears throat> okay, um, Nardis, you joined the stage. Do you want to ask a question? <laughs> it's, it's more of just a, like a question for me. I, di I didn't miss the whole thing, so I'll go back and listen to the replay. But I'm curious about how telomeres are studied. Like, how what technique do you go through to study telomeres? Yeah, we have used an array of techniques. Uh, we have used um, standard fish. We have used we have introduced telomeres in live cells, as I mentioned at the beginning, with glass beads, because these allowed us to preserve. Uh, cells, uh, donor APCs in a viable state that is essential then to study the movements of things when you do cell to cell, to cell cultures. Uh, we have used flow fish, uh, so study, studying basically telomeres by flow. We, we have used telomere restriction fragment analysis, we have used universal stelas, we have used qPCRs, uh, we have used dot plots, uh, yes, pretty much everything. Used. Okay, so well, if if I can have time for another follow up, yeah, you you mentioned fish, and uh, while I'm 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 no expert, I'm an investor. <laughs> so um, my question comes back to I'm from my understanding, uh, and I hope you're familiar. Bio nanogenomics has this new device that's out that. Um, sorry, 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 I can't, I can't understand. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, I'll just um, I'll just end. Okay. Uh, should I just read what's in that chat? Um, if you know about um, bio nanogenomics and their optical uh, genome mapping, Saphir machine uh, for a sequencing technique. Oh, it sounds exotic. I don't know it. I need to read about it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Great. Um, I think it's a it's a sequencing machine that um, it's a yeah. it, well kind of I don't want to interrupt I'm sorry but it's not so they don't classify themselves as a sequencing company they they classify themselves as a new category because of their technique they I don't want to get into the specifics of it but if I can just try to try to simplify it in my non uh, <laughs> professor type voice uh, um well it takes a dna and strips the um strips it down to strands that it can then process into nano channels and use some sort of light to uh, determine what <coughs> the signature is um which is different from like taking a, a gene and then smashing it into a whole bunch of pieces which is kind of the standard technique for sequencing today. 
we sort of take those smashed pieces and put the puzzle back together. But BioNano sort of just kind of reads it um, in a linear fashion instead of that puzzle piece still. Uh, and that's the best that I can do. Uh, but if you're not familiar, uh, please check out BioNano and follow me because I'd love to talk to you afterwards. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yes, uh, we, can, we can stay in touch. Uh, you pr pr probably uh, do you have my, my details because I don't have yours. So uh, oh, okay. difficult for me. Uh, to... I'll follow the, re I don't know, maybe uh, a back channel. I'm driving at the moment. I would send you my yeah. email. But, uh, um, I, I'll, please hang around. I'll be stopped in a moment and we can discuss. Um, yeah. So the... I'm I'm reading the the website. It's it's a high speed, high throughput optical genome mapping and structural variation detection for uh, human and clinical research. So they apparently they look at the sequence, but also at structural changes, but um, in an optical way. But it's really not anything really new, uh, anyways. But. Uh, uh, yeah, we use optics for a lot of stuff nowadays, but, um, yeah, um, thank you so much for taking the time, uh, out of your schedule. Very exciting. Thank you very much. Very it was glad. an honor having you here and your research is so exciting. Maybe next year when you start clinical trials, you can come back one day. That would be really sure. great. Sure. There'll be more exciting things you see soon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm 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 really glad. Just probably I talk, I say it in the name of everyone that you do this research and that you're using your brain to do this, because this will be very helpful for all of us. We are all going to be sick and aging. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That's true. I've turned I've turned 36 this week, so that's uh, yeah. We're I, all I interested. <laughs> I have a cold right now. If I could skip this once a Me year. Me too. So actually, I apologize for coughing, but I got a cold a couple of days ago. I have the same thing. I'm coughing too. It's so annoying. And yeah. So Thank you. Thank you I'm so much. I'm waiting for your drug. <laughs> Thank you. Very kind. Thank you. Thank you. I You're sent right. you a, a message in your back channel. Um, it's my email. If you could verify that you received it, because I don't want to lose contact with you. <laughs> I didn't receive the message. Um, yeah, you don't follow each other, so it's probably in a request. So if you go on the chat, well, um, it's on your app all the way on the top. There's a little paper airplane signal. And then if you go there, they should be popping something up back channel. And then there's chats and then there's a button on top requests. So there's where things land if you don't follow each other. And if you click on you that, can just, if you have LinkedIn, you can just write me. I'm a yeah. LinkedIn, so it's yeah, so the, it's the first time for me on Clubhouse. So I didn't even know about this app. So it's quite, so in, this, in the US must be very popular, right? So I never heard of this. Yeah, especially during COVID, it got really popular. And now it's kind of That's like cool. everything. Never heard before. Okay, cool. Yeah, so um, Nerdish, I shared in the chat, um, the website of Alessio's company and um, there's also his LinkedIn information and so on. So just reach out there. Okay, perfect. And thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Katarina and Alessio. Very much. It's great. Okay, um, I'll close the room. Uh, oh, right. Uh, follow the club if you like discussions like this. We'll have tomorrow at 9 p.m. EST Dr. Dumas talking about multi level development of cognition in AI. And then on Friday, we'll have Dr. Frank uh, talking as, about intelligence as a planetary scale process. Uh, I think that was really interesting his work. So um, feel free to come back. I hope to hear you all soon. And Alessio, all the grants, all the funding for your work, please. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I'll get you talking to my investors. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> okay. Bye I don't please. know if your grandmother does this, but in Portugal, they put a little candle on some things. <laughs> <laughs> Ask your grandmother. Yeah. <laughs> okay, bye. Thank you. Ciao. Thank you. Ciao. Thank you. Have a Bye, great. bye everyone. <laughs>